The X-Phase Pro S is a 360 camera the size of a golf ball that has 25 lenses and can shoot 134 megapixel 360 photos. That's six times higher quality than the average 360 camera right now. But is it a serious competitor in the 360 camera market? Or is it just a gimmick? Well, I've taken some of my sharpest and best 360 photos yet with it. I know earlier in the year, 360 Rumors and I made a video comparing the X-Phase with three of its closest competitors, and it didn't come out on top. However, a lot of time and firmware updates have passed since making that video, and the X-Phase now stands as one of the best options for 360 photography in 2020. Just wait until you see the photos. The design is pretty interesting, so it's a 360 camera with an inbuilt handle and in here you can find the battery and on the head of the camera you'll find all 25 lenses. Most of them can be found around the sides of the camera however there's also two right there on the top and two there on the bottom. It's only got one single button if you long press that it will turn on the camera but it does take 30 seconds which is kind of annoying. Come on. When you turn the camera on, the Wi-Fi also activates, so you can connect it immediately with your smartphone. Now here's something interesting. It's got a one quarter inch tripod thread there right on the bottom, and you can also unscrew it to reveal the charging point as well as the removable memory. Yeah, this has got a removable micro USB and it comes with an inbuilt 32 gigabytes. You can replace this with a lot more memory, but you will need to check the compatibility because not all micro thumb drives will fit inside the X-Phase. Kind of feels like a weapon. It's not super heavy, but it's heavy enough that if you did drop it, I think one of those lenses would definitely break. By the way, I found the inbuilt battery to perform pretty average for a 360 camera. I've been shooting for an hour and beyond, keeping the camera on and it's been okay. Battery life has not been an issue in my experience. It's just a weird camera design, isn't it? You've got a handle that's built in, you can't even remove it. It does make it easier to take selfies, by the way. But yeah, otherwise weird spaceship looking bludgeoning weapon thing. Now let's take a look at the X-Phase's photos. And this first shot is a six shot HDR taken with the X-Phase right around sunset. And welcome to Mr. Ben headquarters, by the way. Here's my brand new photo wall and YouTube background. That's looking awesome. And when I zoom in, I'm still seeing a lot of detail. I can see so much color, contrast, clarity on display with every single one of these photos. And this is something you just don't get with the majority of point and shoot 360 cameras. Whenever you zoom into this level, if you started back here, and you zoom into this, you're gonna start getting some soft edges. There's no way you would see every last bit of graffiti in Leak Street Tunnel here in this photo. So that's the first thing to notice right there is the sharpness is just incredible. I can look out at the city, that's relatively sharp. The window pane is sharp. And to be honest, it's actually kind of shocking because I'm not used to this level of detail. And I don't know if I'll be able to go back to the softer quality of the other cameras. So yeah, I think we can say the X-Phase has done an excellent job with this photo. It looks fantastic all around. That is until we look up. So I found the X-Phase doesn't always stitch the roof perfectly. And this is one of the better results I've gotten from it. But still, it looks like there are marks on the roof. And these color spots around the lights are really distracting. This has been common in my experience with the X-Phase. Because it has so many lenses, it produces lens flares on, I would say, at least 9 of the 25 lenses whenever exposed to a bright light source. And here you can see a bunch of them have flared. And it's caused that patchy red area. I did color correct it. JPEG of this image by the way but I didn't have enough time to fix this because it would take a bit of work and that's not always something you have time to do or want to do with every single photo you take. Look it's definitely a minor complaint and viewers tend to look around the horizon and then down before they look up in 360 photos but it is something that will be there whenever you've got a bright light source in your shots. Here's another sample this time I'm having my morning coffee and I can zoom right in again and I can see the reflection on my eyes. I can see the wall pretty clearly. I can see most details around this scene that other 360 cameras simply wouldn't pick up. Again, this was shot with six shot HDR and overall, I think the dynamic range is pretty decent here. The lighting was a bit tricky, especially around these areas, but as a whole, it's exposed this image well. And again, this is after color correction. So for the most part, I'm really happy with this image. That is until I look 
down and zoom out a bit and you can see that's what it's done to the nader. So with the X phase it struggles with stitching anything within three feet of it and because I've placed the camera on the table here it's struggling with the lines in these tiles a lot. Sometimes it's just a plain stitching error like this and sometimes it tries to connect the two together but it results in a wavy line. I've noticed this issue consistently with every shot I've taken with it. If there's any important details within three feet of the camera prepare for stitching errors. Whereas if we go to this sign which is maybe six feet away there's no issue at all. Next let's talk about the highlights and the X phase definitely struggles with these. As you can see firstly the highlights are white. Yep part of that is user error and I've clearly overexposed this image but if I wanted to get the exposure right in the rest of the image unfortunately I had to sacrifice the highlights here. And what I'm noticing is a lot of weird stuff. The light is kind of bleeding in on the straight lines here. We have like it looks like a mold or a fungus coming through the windows and that seems to be a consistent theme with all bright highlights of this image. You're probably thinking Mr. Ben can't you just use bracketing to solve this? Well yes you can and here I've done exactly that. However I found when merging to HDR it's not as easy as it is with other cameras to get the perfect shot you were hoping for. It's going to take us a lot more editing. So while I've found manually bracketing with the X phase to overall improve the dynamic range a bit it also presents a new range of issues mostly to do with color banding. So with this shot when we look at the ceiling we can see pink and a bluey green and that seems to be a consistent thing with the X phase is the shots turn out a bit too pink and purple sometimes and when you over process them you start getting banding quite a lot. So this is no easy task and definitely not for a beginner who doesn't know Photoshop inside and out. So for me personally the better workflow was just waiting until the light was a bit more even and I could use the six shot inbuilt HDR to get a single shot photo that I didn't have to edit as much as manually bracketing. Although I have seen in the X phase Facebook group there are people getting a lot more technical doing a lot more post production and as a result getting much better results than I'm getting here. By the way the issues I just talked about are all present inside but when you go outside it's a different ball game. When I look around this the shots are a lot better because there's more light everything is clearer there's less overall imperfections and yeah very little stitching error as well. This shot looks awesome. This is as much detail as my iPhone would probably take from this perspective and I've taken it with a 360 camera. So in terms of outside shots I would totally rely on the X phase and I think you could potentially even get around the stitching issues. Yes I'm still seeing some of those highlight issues but as a whole this image looks great. Here's the view from my balcony at sunset and that skyline yeah it's looking pretty good. While I know other cameras would definitely get the exposure here better you wouldn't see those blown out highlights, some of the shadows might be a bit lighter but you're not going to get the detail there so with the X phase it's a trade-off. It's dynamic range and ease of editing versus really high resolution. Another flaw I see is the horizons. Yes it does technically have horizon leveling but it often gets it wrong. Most of the time I found if I don't shoot with the camera directly vertical it gets the horizon off even with horizon leveling on which adds one more step to the workflow. You're gonna have to fix that wavy horizon later on. That's yeah, a bit annoying. Now I want to talk about what it's like to shoot with the X phase and it's not the easiest process in the world. There are quite a few steps. It's not a fast camera. It takes 20 or 30 seconds to start up and getting used to the workflow takes time. You know how with cameras like the One X you can turn it on and start shooting straight away. You don't need to spend hours learning the camera. It's all pretty intuitive. Well with the X phase it's not intuitive in the slightest and takes quite a bit of getting used to the shooting and editing of the these really high resolution photos. I don't really see this as a selfie camera by the way. Here I am in my building's elevator and yeah it's clearly got motion blur because of the auto exposure. It just wasn't able to judge this scene well. It slowed down the shutter speed and it blurred the shot and the camera really is too much work for everyday happy snaps. This is the kind of camera that you would use in wide open spaces so the best use case for that is virtual tours when you've got lots of space all around you and nothing really needs to be super close to the camera. So that's just something to keep in mind. This isn't an everyday 360 camera like the One X and you're going to have a lot of trouble using it in everyday 
everyday situations. If you just wanna capture what you're doing in 360 or you're traveling, then there's inevitably gonna be a ton of stitching errors for anything up close. You can shoot in auto mode as well as manual exposure with the X phase. However, one massive inconvenience is it doesn't allow you a live preview in the app. You have to basically guess your exposure if you're shooting manually. And I do see the X phase as a camera you might buy when you're not at beginner level anymore. You wanna move up into intermediate and advanced territory and get those really high quality results. And often setting your exposure manually comes hand in hand with that. Well, it's really hard to do that without a live preview. Yes, you can do it, but you have to guess and get it wrong a lot before you eventually get it right three or four photos later. The app really is so simple and I don't mean that in a good way. It just feels really underdeveloped with the no live preview and it's not obvious where you're going to find each setting of the camera. I mean, yes, you can get the perfect results you were looking for once you spend enough time in the app searching for the right settings, but again, it's not something that's going to be intuitive and prepare for a lot of trying and failing. I probably don't see the X phase as a camera you would use if you don't have a lot of time to shoot. I found on average I've needed a few minutes to set up each individual shot. And in a virtual tour type environment, that's fine because you've dedicated that time to get your setup and your exposure and get everything right. Whereas purely for happy snaps, it's just gonna take too long to use this camera. I've also found the Wi-Fi to disconnect a lot, sometimes immediately after I take a photo, sometimes after taking a few photos. But one thing for sure is it happens a lot and it's really frustrating. It makes me wanna smash all 25 of those lenses on the concrete, you stupid. Okay, maybe I'm being a bit dramatic. One final thing to add is when you use auto exposure with the X phase, it favors the highlights. So here I've shot a hotel room and everything is pitch black. Outside is definitely really good, but if you were to take the average exposure within this scene, it's not this. It's probably going to be like this wall here. Yet for some reason, the X phase has favored this as the exposure to prioritize with auto exposure. And since you don't have a live preview of your images, it will take several minutes before you're even able to see what it's done in auto exposure mode. And then if you choose to shoot manually, it'll take a few minutes more to guess the exposure, download your shot, see if it looks okay, then change the settings, try again, and so on. Yes, look, that's super annoying, but to get this level of clarity, it's the price you pay. If you prefer the inbuilt single shot HDR workflow, you might find this comparison interesting. Here I have two 360 photos side by side in the exact same situation. On the right is the X phase. On the left is what I deem to be the best 360 camera for virtual tours right now, and that's the Theta Z1. With both cameras, I've used the inbuilt HDR mode and let's take a look across the image. And the first thing I'm observing is the colors and the exposure are way better with the Theta Z1. Everything is more or less perfectly exposed, whereas with the X phase, the shadows are really dark and also the highlights compared to the Theta Z1 are much more blown out. So in terms of overall dynamic range, the Theta Z1 wins hands down. To make it more even, I had to color correct the X phase and still the Theta Z1 looks better uncolor corrected compared to the X phase color corrected. There's also more lens flare at the top of the X phase as there was a light above the camera and you're not getting that as much with the Theta. I was able to bring back the shadows a bit, but it still needs work. Those whites are looking a bit too blue and the colors aren't looking super accurate to what I was seeing there as I was sitting in the cafe. But aside from that, let's zoom in and see another big difference. When I take a look at this mural up close, hands down the X phase is so much clearer. In fact, I can keep zooming and it's still sharper than the Theta Z1 even when zoomed out. And to reiterate the most obvious point about this video, this is the X phase's X factor. Ha <laughs> get it? <laughs> Never mind. But yeah, it's that sharpness, it's that clarity when you zoom in really far, you're still getting clear lines, no pixelation, and very little softness. I zoomed in quite a bit, by the way. Here's the original photo and zooming, 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 still seeing details with a high level of zoom. And yes, this also begs the question, how much realistically is your audience going to zoom in? If you were to ask me, I'd say it would be about this, since this is more or less the perspective a human eye sees. And still, even a bit more zoomed out, obviously the X phase is still much sharper than the Theta Z1. So between these two cameras, I really do see it as a trade-off between extreme sharpness and really good dynamic range. 
think about it. Which one of these two is more important to you? Because that will determine which of these cameras is better suited to you. Personally, I find the really fast workflow and ease of editing with the Z1 a bit more appealing than having that extra resolution of the X phase. However, for places like Facebook, where you can zoom in really far on 360 photos, that resolution is also really tempting. So if you ever needed one really high quality, sharp 360 photo of a location, and you're willing to put up with the editing time, and yes, it can take up to half an hour or even an hour, depending on how bad the image was to begin with, it still could be worth it. However, for shoots like virtual tours, where you're going to have more than five photos per shoot, this editing time is going to become significant and significantly take away from that X factor of that high resolution when it takes so much of your time to get it in a properly exposed photo. So while I know for sure I will be using the X phase a lot in the future and it's only gonna get better and better from here, there's no way I'd use it as an everyday camera because it's just too much work to get the exposure right and to get the editing right. So I think we've established that the X phase does require a learning curve and nothing is obvious. I've spent so much time going through the manuals, searching through the X phase Facebook group, as well as 360rumors.com to find out exactly how this thing works because it's just not obvious. When you turn it on connected to the app, it doesn't really guide you through what you need to do. And you just have to go through a lot more steps and there's a lot more learning compared to the average 360 camera. Oh, and here's an interesting one. It doesn't shoot video, it's a photo only camera. Don't ask me why. Now, since these photos are enormous, naturally the files are going to be as well. I found when shooting with the X phase, file sizes have varied a lot and they can be anywhere from 10 megabytes to 800 megabytes for a single 360 photo from this thing. So it chews up memory really, really fast. And yeah, it's got replaceable memory, which is good, but it's something to keep in mind later on because when editing really big files, it affects your ability to do that quickly within Photoshop. I've got some really good specs on my iMac and it was struggling big time to edit these X phase files and Photoshop was freezing all the time even when doing simple things like removing the tripod, doing a bit of color correction and any kind of manipulation to these files. So if you're thinking about the X phase, you're going to need a fast computer. That's a non-negotiable. I would recommend at least 32 to 64 gigabytes of RAM and ideally an eight to 16 gigabyte graphics card. What do you think of the X phase? All right, Ben. So I think the X-Face is a really good camera for experts. Like, you know, it's super detailed, more detailed than an average DSLR panoramic setup. But for me, I've had a lot of trouble editing it um, in some conditions. Like uh, outdoors, it's totally fine, very smooth, colors are great. Indoors, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And when it's not, it's very hard to edit it. It's great for experts. If you know what you're doing, if you know how to edit, then great. If not, it's not for beginners. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. Okay, I have one more question. Can you sure. fit the X phase in your mouth? <laughs> sure. Okay, go for it. I mean, can you bet? Do you want to bet that I can do that? Yeah, I bet you 10 bucks or sure? PayPal you right now. Okay, ready? Three, okay. two, one. Uh, Oh, cheetah. <laughs> cheetah. Uh uh. The X Phase has come a long way this year. It's made by a small company called Stabilizer Pro. And yes, updates have been slow and they will be in the future. But I do see at the time of making this video, this camera is good enough to buy and the images you can get with it can be absolutely incredible, if you're patient. I see the X-Phase as a great camera for the 360 photographer whose main priority is really high resolution, but also isn't ready to shoot 360s with a DSLR. This camera is a great option for virtual tours and it's only going to get better. If you're a patient person and you value really high resolution, then I would say go ahead and buy it. If you prefer a speedy workflow though, go with one of the other cameras I talk about on my channel like the Theta Z1 or even the Kandal KuCam 8K, which will be my next video. And that's the camera that's had some much needed updates. So if the X phase isn't for you, consider those two. Oh yeah. And that's it. Catch you next time.